Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Game and Telecom video, we're going to be discussing memory. So, during the Hot Chips conference, we've learned some first details on high bandwidth memory free, GDDR6, low cost high bandwidth memory, and what dates that these technologies are going to start emerging for us to purchase in various pieces of technology. So, just to get everyone onto the same page, there has been a lot of discussion right now, of course, graphics cards, whether it's Volta, whether it's Pascal from NVIDIA, whether it's Navi or Vega or um, Polaris from AMD, whether it's Zen or the equivalent Intel processors or the latest APIs, a lot of that is starting to really hit the news. But ultimately, while that technology is very exciting, it comes down to memory to power it. And of course, memory is what is the storage for processors to actually access the data from. So whether it's DDR3 memory or DDR4 memory in a traditional desktop or GDDR5 or high bandwidth memory on a GPU, data is somewhere being stored and retrieved and then processed and then worked on for either later use or for immediate use depending on the scenario. All right, now I've given you the sales pitch of why this is interesting to you, let's talk about the stuff, shall we? So GDDR6, I'm just going to refer to it as 6, 5X, and 5 throughout this video because I'm probably going to go insane otherwise if I keep uh, referring to it as the full abbreviation. So R6 is going to be planned for release in 2018. By the way, slight bit of bonus information, this actually coincides with DDDR5 for the desktop. Currently, we're looking at processors like Broadwell E and uh, Zen when it's released, and Skylake currently using DDDR4, but even with the improvements in processor performance, multi-cores, and all of that jazz, they are starting to reach a point where those processes are going to outperform the bandwidth that DDDR4 can provide. So DDDR5 is going to be introduced in 2018, which is a couple of years from now. Obviously, plans can change. So R6, once again, is going to be introduced in 2018. Now, there was some confusion on R6 and 5X. So here's, here's the skinny. Here's the bit of... Uh, is the join. So currently, if you've got a GTX 1080 in your desktop, you already have 5X technology, and it's running at 10 gigabits per second. That's going to be increased to 12 gigabits per second, but originally the specifications were for it to run at up to 15 gigabits per second. But we're probably not going to ever see that, because from what um, the technology conference has told us from Samsung and so on, they are not really happy with that. What they'd prefer is for us to see the introduction of GDDR6, and that is going to be rated at even higher speeds, but more importantly, uh, we're also going to not see the power efficiency curve just get thrown into the garbage bin. So, in a theoretical world, GDDR5X is going to act as kind of a stopgap until GDDR6 is released. So, 5X for now, and then R6 in the future. Currently, we have high bandwidth memory 1 GPUs. It's a pretty common place with AMD's Fury lineup. So, for example, the regular Fury, the Fury X, and so on, all use high bandwidth memory 1, which offer a maximum capability of, ready for it, that's right, for gigabytes of memory. But high bandwidth memory 2 is going to be introduced for regular customers over the next several months. Now, NVIDIA have already one graphics card which is available, although it's not really targeted at us. It's more for, you know, high uh, performance computing, for example, simulations of the universe or whatever it is you end up using it for. And that is the GP100. Now, the GP100 is going to be pretty monstrous but it's not necessarily indicative of what we as customers are going to be getting for some time but SK Hynix have clarified during the uh, Hot Chips conference that H HBM technology is going to be really leveraged for three different markets so those would be servers and high performance computing as we've just discussed with the usage of GP100 there's going to be networks and graphics and finally, there's going to be notebooks and client desktops. 
From what SK Hinnox have told us during this uh, summit, we're not going to be seeing up to 32 gigabytes for customer graphics cards. So if you have any vision of the next couple of you know months that we're going to see a 32 gigabyte um, high bandwidth memory 2 graphics card, you can probably forget it. It's looking like what they're going to do is offer 32 gigabits per second through four stacks of eight high modules, which if you take four times it by eight, that's your number, but this is going to be strictly for high performance computing slash servers. The graphics market, which really is what Nvidia and AMD are going to be using for us as customers once again, those are going to be cubes which only have a capacity up to four. So once again, four times four, there's your answer. Now, it's a bit of a shame, but realistically, 16 gigabytes for now is probably going to be about the most that we're going to require, but that's for now. They are, however, offering a few other solutions. One is an intermediary, and that would be high bandwidth memory, which is low cost. So, just to get everyone onto the same page, because I know there's a lot of information here. Currently, HBM1 offers 128 gigabits per 128 gigabytes per second, which is one gigabit per second per pin, but they are going to be offering up to 200 Gbps, um, I'm sorry, that was my phone, which is an intermediary between the performance of high bandwidth memory 2 and high bandwidth memory 1. You'll notice under costings per gigabyte, there's no data yet, it's just 0.x, so what that is, I don't know, and I have a feeling that they're probably still working on it. However, it's going to be cheaper than high bandwidth memory 2 and it's probably going to be a better solution than high bandwidth memory 1. It's going to be interesting how this memory is leveraged and I wouldn't be surprised and this is my speculation. I'm not saying that this is going to happen but I wouldn't be surprised if the next range of graphics cards, for example Volta or, or um, Navi, almost screwed up then, couldn't remember the name, or Navi will feature this for the high end but not quite bleeding so for example we could see it used for the equivalence of the 1080 of the um, Volta lineup or it's possible we could be seeing that with you know let's say GDDR6 finally high bandwidth memory free now this one is a bit confuzzling because you might recall multiple AMD roadmaps have penned in Navi, and we know that it is, well, ne using next generation memory. What the hell that means has been really ambiguous. What they are planning on HBM2, uh, HBM3, I'm, I'm doing well here with fuck ups, aren't I? Is even more performance. It's not going to be released, however, until 2019, which is one of the reasons that I personally don't believe that we're going to see it used with Navi, given the release date of Navi is supposedly, and you've got to love that word, supposedly 2017, or um, I'm guessing Vulture is going to be about the same. So even if it's late 2017, let's say it's even very late 2017 and slips into 2018, there's a very good chance that HBM3 is not going to be available for that. What it's going to offer is over twice the performance of memory, which is ludicrous, and in considerably higher density as well. What that means, for those of you who are not quite familiar with th those terminologies, you can basically say that memory is going to be even more insane, so for example 64 gigabytes or above for graphics cards or whatever you're using, and insane bandwidth. We're looking at theoretically, you know, one terabyte per second would be absolutely nothing, possibly two terabytes per second. Considering once again, the graphics leaps that we're making forward in every generation. For example, look at the GTX 1080 and compare it to the 980. There's a reason it's using GDDR5X memory. The performance is insane. And when we start to factor in what's going to happen with Navi or Volta, 
and then a generation after that, it's not really surprising that we're going to start to see this level of insane performance. Personally, I'm looking forward to it, and I think it's going to be a very interesting next couple of years in the computer industry, and I know I've said that ad nauseum at this point, but seriously, the technology that we're starting to see introduced into the desktop, into the PCs, into, uh, well, everything, is just getting absolutely mind-blowing. And in a few years' time, imagine you're going to have DDDR5 memory in your PC, combined possibly with high bandwidth memory free. That's pretty nuts. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.